This video assumes you're already familiar with the Gram-Schmidt process. If you're not, I'll link Professor Strang's lecture on Gram-Schmidt from MIT 1806 in the description. It's a course I highly recommend in general. Anyway, so here I've got a few basic tests, which I'll go over later, but let's start by writing our QID comp function. Get the shape and rank of our matrix here and make sure its rank is not less than its number of columns. We can initialize what will become our orthonormal matrix Q here with the right shape and iterate through each column of our original matrix. Then it's just a case of putting that column in Q, which is a vector we'll need to make orthogonal. This this is where the Grand Schmidt process comes in, which tells us to make this vector orthogonal, we must subtract the projection of our vector onto each previous column vector from our vector. There isn't a built-in projection function in NumPy, but the formula is quite simple. Just take the dot product of the previous column and the current column, divide that by the previous column dotted with itself, and then multiply the previous column with that scalar. Once that's all done, we've got ourselves an orthogonal matrix. To make it orthonormal, we're going to have to normalize each column vector. This is very easy with NumPy broadcasting, where we can divide each column of Q by its respective norm. Final step is to compute the upper triangular matrix R. This can be done quite easily by rearranging the A equals QR equation and noticing that the inverse of the orthonormal matrix is is quite simply its transpose. Return that and that's our QR decomposition done. Before ending this video, I'd like to go through the few tests I wrote beforehand. The first one tests the orthonormality of Q simply by using its defining property that a matrix is orthonormal if and only if it multiplied by its transpose gives us the identity matrix. Note that it's important to multiply Q by transpose Q rather than the other way around so that we test non-square semi-orthogonal matrices too. The next one tests the upper triangularity of R quite simply by counting the number of zeros before each row of R. Lastly, and most certainly not least, we test if the decomposition even works at all by multiplying R by Q and making sure it's equal to our original matrix A. That's just about it. The testing setup after this is really quite simple.